Dave Hodges here, host of the Common Sense Show, and uh, take two as we're kind of reorienting here, and we're lucky enough to have Jamie Walden on with us right now. And uh, Jamie uh, has had experience uh, being in a combat unit that entered Baghdad. Uh, he's been a policeman, been a first responder, and now currently he preaches the word of Jesus Christ. And so wide background, and I said, Jamie, let's do a prediction show because we both agree 2024 will be a pivotal year. Jamie, welcome to the show. Glad you could join us. Yeah, thanks for having me on again, Dave. It is uh, it is a, a very unique, you know, I kind of use the word convergent zenith. Maybe I overuse that, but it's just what's uh, imprinted in my brain forever. But I, I truly believe in of, of the same mindset that 2024 will be a a pivotal year in the way in which that the we'll, we'll say Main Street versus Wall Street, right? Where Main Street will become increasingly aware of the degradation and the and the total dire circumstances with which we're actually in. The last election cycle and everything that's transpired with that, plus the thing you know that occurred you know, over the course of the last three years globally and internationally and what that did uh economically supply chains consolidations of uh different uh governing agencies and implementations of control measures and you know biometric data bank stuff being being implemented and then also the de-dollarization that's occurred and then move into the geopolitical sphere of multiple layers of mega uh, militaristic and geostrategic movements, alliances and partnerships being formed and broken and everything across the board. All that has been kind of going on. I mean, guys like you and I and other people that, you know, typically are the ones even listening to this type of information, they have their finger in the pulse of the reality of what's going on globally and internationally and domestically. Absolutely. But, the ma but Main Street doesn't. And that's why I think 2024 is going to be radically different is, is I believe that it will break open into the purview of the collective conscious of our domestic society in a way that they won't be able to deny anymore uh, uh, several factors. One, the U.S. is a paper tiger that's beyond in decline, that, like it's a done deal, that the de-dollarization and the... Uh, 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 homogeny of the U.S. dollar is null and void, that our ability to project power and our power prowess within the United States military because of the complete abject perversion of the Joint Chiefs on downward is a paper tar tiger, that our domestic policies are paper tigers, and that the, the U.S. as a whole, CONUS, continental United States, is, un is vulnerable to attacks from both foreign and domestic actors in a way that they've never even foreseen. They, they can't even comprehend, again, because of the normalcy bias, or for lack of a better word, the pleasure bias of the majority of the United States of America. But I believe that 2024 is when all that's going to change. And we can, we can work our way into that. Dave, uh, for the listeners, Dave and I were talking off air and we we're both in agreement and said it at the same time that I believe that 2024, this will be the Maggie event and we can work our way to it. How we even get to that point will be a an, a, an attack on the infrastructure very, via cybernetics, electronic warfare or cyber warfare. However, yes. whatever term of usage you want to use to come into that in a way that will be conscious searing in, on a society and on a global level, a, a shared traumatic collective consciousness experience that will actually reframe and rewrite the entire momentum and the modus operandi of the global structure economically, militaristically, geopolitically, and especially domestically from here on out. I believe that 2024, that will be the singular overarching event but a lot of these other micro events, which they're not micro, they're they're mega things. But in retrospect to that, we'll pale, pale in comparison to that prediction. And again, I, I mean, the listeners know, Dave, like with Dave and I, is that obviously we it, it is speculate. We have to speculate. We That's why it's predictions. A prediction mm -hmm. by default is a speculation. But what the listeners need to know and understand is that it is an informed speculation. It's not sensationalistic hyperbolic you know conspiratorial blah you know just to see how deep down the rabbit hole we can get we're working off of imperial objective uh data peer-reviewed articles hot mic incidents they're from their word of mouth their white papers their published papers their policies their simulations we're working off of what is being said openly not anything that is 
hyper speculative. The only thing that speculation is based on what they're saying. This is what we foresee coming in 2024. Dave? Could not agree with you more. And uh, I, I think the sine qua non, and you've already touched on it, is going to be cyber takedown. And let me tell you what I've discovered in the last two days. And I got this uh, from a tip from a former Intel official. He said there's a group out there called Cyber Research. And he goes, it's actually a front group for Israeli intelligence. They use former and present Israeli agents. And they're setting the stage, I believe, desensitization for no election. Uh, I don't think the Democrats have anyone that can win, and I don't know if they can cheat enough to win uh, because the numbers are so skewed against them. And so this group called Cyber Research went through, and they are talking about the various things that could cause an election not to happen. And they said, base case, best case scenario, uh, we would have to do absentee balloting. To, and I thought, oh, my gosh, what could go wrong there? Um so they're either setting up for massive voter fraud on a scale that'd be unprecedented, or they just won't have an election and declare martial law because of the cyber grid takedown. And the fact that this is connected to Israeli intelligence tells me this carries credibility. And I'll tell you why, Jamie. Biden has written a blank check to the Israeli, uh, to the IDF, to their military exploits in the Middle East. We're giving them everything they want. And they need Joe Biden or someone like Biden back in the White House. Yeah, that's interesting, Dave, because there's a lot of people that if you're not super in tune to how the intelligence community and, and international global intelligence community operates is there's been a, a, you know, a lot of highly informed, you know, comments that allude to the fact that actually all the five eyes intelligence agency, including the CIA and MI5, MI6 and all the other, you know, uh, different intelligence apparatus are actually subordinate to Mossad. So when I hear information like that coming out from Mossad, it, it does carry more weight for me than if I heard it coming out of, you know, ISS or Pakistan or, you know, Jordanian intelligence, you know, where, wherever else it's coming out of because, uh, because there, there is a major play at work. And what's interesting about this, uh, uh, prediction about 2024 being a, a, the year of a, you know, mega global traumatic conscious searing event via cybernetics and electronic warfare is that all the world's leaders are actively talking about it. They're predicted programming it. They are soft selling it. They're giving yes. a soft disclosure regarding it. Uh, we have Hollywood and mainstream talking about it. We had uh, uh, Catherine, uh, I can't think of her name, Catherine. Maybe. Austin Fitz. No, Catherine uh, uh, Herridge on CBS just recently stating that she had a prediction. And, they, and, and most people that listen to this program are aware that the heads of all the major media organizations are aspects part and partial with uh, intelligence agency handlers. That's not a secret. That's been... Publishing white papers, you can go research it in Library of Congress, Operation Mockingbird Media, blah, 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 right? Yeah. And so if a mouthpiece is being allowed to say, they do not say these things off the cuff because they actually have a value of the American uh, uh, society and American resiliency to be able to endure these things. They say these as a form of predictive program. And she recently on CBS specifically mentions that she has a woeful prediction for 2024 that would include a black swan event. Everybody's using the word black swan, yeah. black swan, black swan. Now, what's interesting, Dave, is guess what the World Economic Forum said? They expect a pandemic of cyber nature to occur Yes. In the near future, being 2024, uh, the World Economic Forum also conducted Cyber Polygon, which was a simulation of a cyber pandemic. In fact, there you can go on the World Economic Forum website right now and watch a video, high production quality video that they did specifically showing how in a 10 uh, a 10 powerful degree that a cyber warfare attack would spread 10 power greater than what COVID did. And they have a whole high end video say they're doing all this predictive programming. Bill Gates said the same thing. The next pandemic will not be of a biological nature. It will be of a cybernetic nature. Uh, we have that recent movie coming out on reprobate flicks, uh, you know, leave the world behind, which <laughs> specifically lays out and actually gives actors to sow the seeds of, of where this could come from, right? This is all predicted programming of Russia, Iran, and North Korea conducting a cyber attack 
taking down the grid in the United States of America and allowing the American populace to create internal civil war so that they're easier to take over kinetically. That was the narrative of the movie. And then also we have, you know, the the other predictive programming movie coming out called Civil War, which is to air next year. So what you're saying, Dave, about this this uh, aspect of some kind of elect electronic warfare, whether it's domestically produced, that's a very strong possibility, or it's foreign adversarially produced, uh, it, it doesn't matter. That That's a mute point. The reality is, is like even what you're saying, Dave, is the why. Why would that be implemented in 2024? And why is there a high index of suspicion of this prediction coming true in 2024? It's because of the election cycle. The, the, the country, this is rolling into another prediction, is at a fever pitch for a national divorce unto a national civil Kinetic sort of limited, I say limited, I don't think it'll be right, but, but limited civil divorce under civil kinetic engagements within the continental United States out from the center of the country in order to completely erode the last vestments of U.S. hegemony and moralism and nationalism and, uh, uh, you know, a judiciary system that has some degrees of soundness or lawfulness, some degrees, very few are left. And that all this is going to be used part and partial to create distrust, discord, fear and anxiety and everything else to get what they want to accomplish for next year's election. And the prediction on my end for that is to get a Chinese backed government in the United States of America, as if we don't already have one. But I mean, an overtly Chinese CCP Socialist, Marxist, communist back government to completely erode uh, the fabric of the United States of America to bring it under a new governmental system led by the East. So there's going to be this huge pivot that occurs in 2024, and it will come through our election cycles, and that will come through a cyber cybernetic type of attack. You know, Jamie, you mentioned something right off the top that where we draw our information from. Uh, and this is a, this is informed speculation is the way you put it. And I really agree with the use of that terminology. And let me throw something else in that really bolsters what you're saying. Um, two things. One, when Biden left office, he was in this lame duck period in 2016, and he signed an illegal treaty with the United Nations. And for a treaty to become law, it has to go through the Senate and pass by a two-thirds majority. Biden did it on his own say-so, and it's effectively a treaty with the UN. And it's often referred to as the Kigali Principles. And it basically, at that time, it was 28 member nations coming together. And if one had trouble, the chief executive of the one that had trouble could call on the UN to bring in forces from the other 27 nations. And totally illegal. John Kerry was part of this process as well, too. So that's number one. And I believe that if we go into kinetic action uh, in terms of civil disobedience, uh, which I believe the other side wants, they want the excuse to have us occupied by UN troops, including China. China will be wearing blue helmets. The other thing that I wanted to point out was they've rehearsed the subjugation of the United States. It was called Jade Helm 15 and 16, where they practiced, they actually recruited workers for $18 an hour to play the role of, and I quote, disaffected ex-military ex guerrilla activists. Yeah. In other words, American soldiers, you know, the white hats that we talk about, rising up to take the country back, and they practice the subjugation of these people. And, yeah, and um, isn't it interesting, Dave, that the myopic nature of, of uh, you know, even via the Cloward and Piven strategy, you know, the Stanford yeah. professors yeah. that coined that word, that that we forget that stuff. So when, and, and I know that you've done the seminal research on this, Dave, a lot of this I've learned through your research, but the Jade Helm, the Jade Helm, uh, 15, 16 drills, and also, uh, and then the grid X one and two drills, where again, our adversaries were brought in to learn how to mm -hmm. systematically take down the power grid to bring it up selectively. And that's why I, I personally don't subscribe to an EMP narrative. I know there's a there's an EMP commission, a lot oh, of yeah. seminal work being done on there. There's a lot of congressional hearings regarding that. A lot of people that are really uh, sounding the alarm on the, the, the threat, the cybernetic and electronic warfare threat of an EMP. I personally don't subscribe to that as a, as a, it's a, uh, 
a plausible military strategy, but not a viable military strategy because being on a, on a, uh, for lack of a better word, a conquering force, taking a, taking a nation. I, I, you know, I was a part of taking Baghdad in 03, the March up and everything like that is that we actually, as a foreign adversary entering in a foreign ground way way over extended from our logistics we are completely dependent on the infrastructure of the nation in which we're entering into we would we were not a it was njp you get non-judicial punishment if you hit a transformer if you shot a transformer if you mess with the power grid if you mess with the water treatment plants and even if you mess with the internet connectivity within a nation kinetically i'm talking bullets bombs whatever to where you actually destroy it so that's why the Grid X1 and Grid X2 drills are are in, unbelievably crucial and Iran, Chinese and Russian cyber warfare units are very important to understand and the sellout and the sell off by the majority of our uh, quote unquote elected officials in the United States of America by the CCP that's all documented it's all out mainstream the masses of them that are bought and paid for by the CCP, that they will be brought in, not for EMP, I just don't subscribe to EMP, but for cyber warfare to be able to hold down the grid, which they were specifically brought in and trained on in Grid X1 and Grid X2 drills, to then selectively bring it back online as they need it. So that in and of itself is the stoking. Talk about fanning the flames of the fire of civil discord and civil dis disobedience and civil war, where you have selective areas of the nation that have internet access or power or ability to have fresh water, whatever it is, what, to whatever degree they pull it down, and then they bring it back online selectively. I mean, this is it's very strategic, asymmetric and hybrid warfare. Most people keep waiting for World War Three to break out when they see the bombing of Dresden or the bombing of London and, and these these mass armadas, you know, of of bombers coming over and carpet bombing and, and creating firestorms. That is not what World War Three looks like. World War Three looks like exactly what we're already in. We are in World War Three. Everybody else in the world knows it except for the American citizen. The American citizen is the only one that's oblivious. UK prime minister is warning their people to brace. Finland, Norway, Sweden, the Balkan states, the, the Baltic states, the Balkan states, uh, even in Southeast Asia, all of them are making active preparations because they know that we are in the middle of World War III. World War III looks asymmetric. It looks hybrid. It looks like proxies using proxies to then use proxies. It looks like complete uh, plausible deniability on every level. And it looks like hyper low tech force multipliers, i.e. cyber warfare, to take down highly technological uh, weapon systems and communications within a larger nation state, i.e. the United States of America. So That's you it. enter in the Chinese balloon, you enter in our basically our entire uh, surface warfare fleet has been rendered completely nullified by the Houthis and by low tech drones and low tech missiles and low cost missiles and all of our high tech, high cost infrastructure and the interdependability of all that networked infrastructure has been completely nullified in the last six months where it's 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 we're a paper tiger. We're a total paper tiger. And that's why I think that this is such a, a prescient topic for people to know and understand for what they can expect to see coming in 2024. I agree with you that it will not be EMP because the the Chinese want to occupy this land for its resources. Exactly. And that's been very clear. And they have said they don't want to do EMP. They can repair cyber grid much easier than EMP. Yes. Uh, you're talking about a 10-year rebuild if we had EMP. Uh, and they want instant access to our resources. The other thing uh, that you mentioned about Grid X 1 and 2, those were simulated takedowns of the grid, and they could have either been cyber or EMP. They focused on grid vulnerability. But what they did in the latter years of uh, Obama, he he invited the Chinese and Russians to participate in the drills, and yes. that's that was treason. We basically showed them how to do what they would need to do to take down the grid. The other thing, too, and I didn't mention this, during Jade Helm 16, and I've got the video for this on my uh, on my website, I'm withholding it for the moment for political reasons. I'm going to bring it back in a couple of weeks with an explanation. But I showed this before. In Jade Helm 16, there were soldiers, and they looked Eastern European to me, but they had on a patch 
that was a black triangle with gold, some kind of print that you couldn't make out. And they were uh, incarcerating American soldiers, and you could tell by the American flag on the sleeve. In other words, it looked like it had been yeah. a war game. It was a war game. No one was dying. And it was a war game held at Camp Grayling, and they were incarcerating American soldiers. So in other words, I believe that was the end game result of the Kigali principles being played out at Camp Grayling for an occupation. I, I agree. And actually, Dave, that, that can lead us right into another prediction for 2024 is okay. the uh, the initiation of low level fifth column kinetic actions across the U.S. So I, I believe that that's something that we're going to we're it, I don't think it's going to be like full on takeover, takeover of the, of the continental United States. But with the amount of the fifth column actors coming in, it be, people keep talking all oh, the immigration, immigration. It's not immigration. It, it, this is not an immigration influx. This is asymmetric warfare, hybrid warfare, kinetic actions. This has nothing to do with immigration. This is this is full on day one military stratagem 101 of infiltration of fifth column forces for an appointed time to create instability via subterfuge within the continent of the United States. And whether that looks like attacking first responders, you know, fire police, EMS, uh, ER rooms, water treatment plants, uh, low level power transmission plants and power transformers, you know, uh, 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 barge disruptions on the, on the river, the Mississippi River, Ohio River, Arkansas, you know, all these other different rivers, uh, uh, impeding port and port traffic, whatever it looks like, it's about overwhelming critical infrastructure. So, the radical influx to let me give a number for the listeners seven this is from the dhs department of homeland security u.s border patrol seven thousand percent increase in chinese military age males coming across the border in 2023 seven thousand percent yeah. increase okay so if you have a seven thousand percent increase that should give you in one year, just one year, that should give you an indicator of what to expect in 2024. That's why my prediction for 2024 is we're going to see this initiation initiation of low-level fifth column forces. So whether it's overlaid with the kinetic, with the cyber warfare, with the election cycles, with the internal chaos, whatever it is, and it, it will it all overlays. So you can't take snapshots of each one of these of these uh, uh, concepts, you can't snapshot it. You have to see how the interconnectability or the synergy of how they all play out together. And that's kind of what Dave and I are talking about here. What, yeah, you're so right on the money. Um, I've captured on from videos that have been sent to me and still photos of these Chinese. They're lined up in straight lines being inspected by the Border Patrol and they're standing at parade at rest, you know, three or four of them in a row. They're standing at attention. They're in straight lines. I mean, the average immigrant group is not going to be doing that. Uh, it was yeah. clearly clearly military. And you could see if they rolled up their sleeve like this, you could see the dragon tattoo that they put yeah, on. And what's interesting, CTV. Dave, is, is again, I, I think it's important for listeners to know and understand because they, there's so many people that will hear this information, they, they instantly – you know, they they brand you with the scarlet letter of conspiratorial or sensational. <laughs> this is mainstream media. This is investigative journalism 101. This is uh, different heads of states from both congressional, senatorial, uh, and state level officials have all gone down there and toured and bear witness to it and spoken to the amount of Chinese fifth column forces and Middle Eastern fifth column forces to include both Hamas and Hezbollah. Oh, that's interesting. Who are we engaged with right now in the Middle East? Mm -hmm. Oh, Hamas and Hezbollah. And who are we engaged with in Taiwan and North Korea and Japan and the South Pacific and the China Sea? Who are we engaged with in Central Africa right now? The Russians and the Chinese at every level. So who? what's going on with Venezuela, Brazil, Guyana? Russia and China with proxies against the U.S. as a proxy right smack in the middle of the northern part of South America. And it's like, so people that want to dismiss this stuff is like, you just can't. And if you will, you know, as, as Steve Quill says, like denial unto death, right? Dumb death and denying unto death. And are, and, and uh, you, you can deny the reality of it, but you can't deny the consequences of denying the reality of it, for lack of a better word. And so I, I believe that anymore. that we will see a a major initiation as we did in 2023. See, people forget they're myopic. 
They forget all the train derailments. They forget the barge striking pylons. All these were, were part and partial tied to outside actors, but no criminal investigations were ever conducted in them. We had power grids going down. We had, what, a hundred and something food processing plants magically catch on fire and burn to the ground this year? Are you kidding? Like, this is all asymmetric hybrid warfare. It is a softening of critical infrastructure for a bigger kinetic tack. And on a nation the size of the United States of America, the isolationism by natural terrain features, both our mountain ranges and our oceans of the United States of America, the nature of the cohesion within the United States of America, the amount of personal protection that Americans typically have means that Every single means of warfare, hybrid, asymmetric, must be employed first to a total degradation of everything, including national identity and cohesion and all these different things before you could actually do what you want to do. And I believe 2024 will be the final softening blow. I'm not saying that the U.S. is going to collapse in 2024. I don't believe it will collapse in 2024, but I believe that the final blows to... uh create the fertile soil from which that will grow is going to occur in 2024. And then we'll see it roll out into 2025 to 2027 is when the big show will start happening. Do you think the uh, uh, Biden administration is uh, like the French VC government? It's a proxy government for China. Unequivocally. I, I mean, there's, I, I have no, no qualms about saying confidently that unequivocally. And I don't believe that it started with, a with I almost said O'Biden, because that would make sense with <laughs> O'Biden. Um, I don't believe it started with O'Biden. I believe it, I believe it started 30, 30 to 50 years ago. And more in particular, I know you and I have talked about this day with the perestroika deception um, coming out of the Soviet defectors that, that when most people hear China, what they need to remember is it's, communism it's not china it's it's communism so russia and china in bed with one another and by the way one of the de facto aspects and the unique qualifiers of communism was that they uh they hold under in the perestroika deception through the defectors radical islam and the radicalization of islam and the cohesive network of what was once mega tribalism to consolidate them all of that was spoken of by the defectors that they were going to do that and even even instigate a war on terror to weaken the u.s internally with strife against an outside actor that actually they controlled in fact they came out in, in very public reports that even Atta, one of the 9-11 hijackers, was trained by Russian Spetsnaz in the GRU in Croatia or something like that before he was initiated to go over and, you know, conduct this asymmetric warfare aspect uh, and to generate the war on terror. So when I say unequivocally, unequivocally, the executive branch is completely a proxy of the CCP. I don't say CCP as a governmental entity, but I say communism as a spiritual and economic and governmental ideology. That's what it is. It, it's actually, communism is theocratic. It's a theocracy. And that's what they rule and reign under. It looks economic, but it's actually theocratic because what they worship is what most people could never even understand. Couldn't agree with you more. The um, other thing I wanted to ask you about here, too, is I'm sure you recall what Christopher Ray testified before Congress a few weeks ago, in which he mentioned there's an estimated 80,000 terrorists that have crossed our southern border into America, and he created a watch list for certain cities across America. Uh, do you think that was a move for plausible deniability? Hey, we Absolutely. did this to you, but now we got to act like, gee, we just couldn't stop it. Yeah, they got to act like they're helpless and, and they got to. Yeah. And that's what it is. It's all about plausible deniability. So that's, you know, that that whole predictive programming is a real thing. Anybody who's studied that world knows that and the intelligence agent, like predictive programming is a real thing and collective conscious softening and manipulation is a real thing. Right. My mass mind control, for lack of a better word, although that may sound like a strong word to a lot of viewers. That is actually what this is all documented in anything from MK Ultra to Operation Northwoods to Operation Gladio to whatever. I mean, they've been they, it's it's wide open. They 
they brag about it. They're braggadocious. I, this, there's nothing hidden behind a veil in this stuff. It's just they know that people don't care. So, yeah, 80,000, not 80,000. How about 350,000? 350,000 is the more accurate number of the amount of fifth column forces that are pre-staged in America throughout major cities and not just major cities. Here's the part of hybrid warfare and uh, the the utilization of smaller forces in a force multiplying way to create a bigger form of terror, which then terraforms the consciousness to be subjugated easier, is that they'll be in very rural, random places is where they'll be initiated. It's not just going to be in the big cities. It will be in the places you least expect, smallest populations. They feel totally isolated from the chaos of BLM and Antifa and blah, 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 blah and Portlandia and all this crazy stuff and, and, and Chicago and Detroit and Minneapolis and, and all these things. It, it's going to occur so that you feel the fear, which is terror. That's the nature of terrorism to terrorize. And it will occur at all these random, even obscure rural areas all at one time. And so the party divided. And I, and I, they, I believe that there will be that. It. Yeah. And I, I believe that that we will begin to see that soft, low level, asymmetric warfare component of fifth column forces breaking out in 2024 that's another prediction so well they've already done this jamie and, and let me be really specific i covered this a couple of years ago when i looked at the strategy of the cartels the sinaloa's focus on the urban areas and the cjng does the rural areas this, this division and they represent china i mean fentanyl china in fact yeah. l- let me digress just for a moment I've interviewed a man. He's a 30-year RICO investigator. Sarah Westall's interviewed him three times. I've interviewed him twice. His name's John Thaler. He's written a book called Report to the Governor. And I have lived in Maricopa County, some of what he's talking about. And what he basically says is money laundering operations for China through the Sinaloas are controlling many of the of the, of the uh, politicians, uh, the judges, uh, law enforcement. And it's listen. He has twenty thousand affidavits and a hundred eighty thousand page report. This is not hyperbole. This is an experienced RICO investigator who had personal reasons to get involved in this. They've tried to kill him several times. Um, I have lived some of what he's talking about. I don't need him to tell me that they're carrying out assassinations of anyone who uh, uh, goes against him. I've seen it. Now, the one thing I want to say here is what's happening in Maricopa County is like a stage one of what's coming to the rest of the country. In fact, you know how far they go, Jamie? This is incredible. I, I wouldn't have believed that so John Taylor hadn't had the affidavits. They've taken people who aren't even lawyers. They use AI to insert law degrees in key uh, licensing positions and academic institutions, and then they install these people as appointed judges, and they're the ones making the crazy rulings on the elections, like Kerry Lake. Um yeah. And, and so when you talk about the division between they're going to go rural, they won't just be urban, this is already done. This has already been decided. The CJNG are the Chinese representatives in the rural areas. And let me tell you what I was told out here, Dave. So uh, for the listeners, I live in the Four Corners uh, region, which Four Corners is, you know, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico. And uh, I, I can look out. This is my my she shed. That's what my buddies call a she shed. I, I'm in my little tiny house studio thing right outside of my house. But if I look out this window, I'm looking at Mesa Verde National Park. So right. I'm literally can look at Mesa Verde National Park out my window here. And um, I was told when I moved out here, they they said in which I'm saying this because there's there's reservations everywhere out here. Primarily yeah. Navajo and you is you is, is start that story over because you, you were cutting out. Yeah, I saw I saw that just kind of. OK, so what I was told when I moved out here and uh, and we can pick it up from there. Hopefully the audio is still working for you, Dave, even if the if even if the video doesn't. So um, and, and what I may do, Dave, is I'll stop my video. So maybe we can at least get good audio. How's that working for you, audio? Jamie, you were getting to the point where you're saying what you were told with regard to interference. Yeah. So what I was told when I came out here is, is uh, I'm, I'm you Navajo Anasazi area, you know, uh, historical heritage routes to Pueblo. So we have the, the reservations and then the casinos. And what I was told when I was come out here 
is that the cartels run the reservations, the cartels run the casinos, the casinos sure. on the reservations because it's independent territory. It's literally sovereign nation land. It is not United States of America that they can operate independently without any oversight that the casinos on the reservations are used for specifically for laundering the money from the cartels, which is actually the Chinese. I was told that when I moved out here. And to a further point, I was told that the local law enforcement, not all of them, but by and large, the lo local law enforcement is complicit in allowing these operations to be conducted. In yeah, Jamie, we're still, we're, ladies and gentlemen, stay with us, because I think there's a reason why we're being interfered with. Um, there's a tribe, and I'm not going to get into specifics here, but anyone can look this up. It traverses Arizona and Mexico, an Indian tribe, and it's a home for cartel, and it's the... Uh, and every kind of trafficking you can imagine comes through this. And this is part and parcel to a lot of the reservations. And no, I'm not anti-Native American. I'm just telling you this is what's going on in our country right now. And the, and a lot of the people that are doing it are the CJNG cartel um, in the rural areas. In the urban areas, running the trafficking operations is the Sinaloas. But they all work for China. This is what people don't get. This is what they don't understand. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you, Dave. Mm -hmm. Jamie? Yep. Yep. I can okay. I can hear you. Um, totally let me fine. just let me digress to what let me digress just to one quick anecdote here. Carrie Lake, America first, closed the border, uh, not gonna kowtow to China. That's what she ran on. And of course they don't want her. So the Sinaloas are paying off these fake judges and a lot of them are fake judges not real judges with credentials and their rule against carrie lake even though there's overwhelming evidence and i won't go into all the details of the evidence i've covered it in some of the things I've, I've done but i mean there's 10 points that i've covered before where these elections were invalid i'll just give you one uh in carrie lake's election in maricopa county the most numerous populated county in arizona 60 percent of the voting machines Machines failed upon opening in heavy Republican areas. And they said, no problem here. And it's admitted to in court this happened. It's documented. But the, the judges said, there's no problem. It was a free and fair election. And it's done on behalf of China because China did not want Carrie Lake because of her position. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I guess, Dave, like, let, let me shift gears, Eva, uh, geographically for another prediction for um, 2024 okay. that I, that, that I believe is going to happen. And, and that is, uh, I believe that we will see a U.S. carrier, if not an entire carrier strike group, be sunk uh, in 2024. I believe that it'll be come from a, a mm -hmm. land-based anti-ship missile and that it will be utilized as a Gulf of Tonkin incident 2.0, again, for a shared collective consciousness traumatic experience, very high optics. It's all about optics. If anybody understands how, how the world works nowadays, they have to get the right optics to achieve their desired end state. And I believe that the amassing of the majority of our, our surface and subsurface uh, naval fleets and assets over to that region of the world is strategic to specifically goad or allow for a limited kinetic strike for a sinking of a for the for the major optics of a sinking of some naval assets over there so i believe that that's going to happen in 2024 and what that's going to do is create the basis with which they need for a declaration of war to some degree whatever degree i don't know a war on iran and also several other middle eastern countries even former allies and partners because of the decoupling of the U.S. dollar and the death gurgles of the uh, uh, homogeny of the petrodollar. And that this must occur. This is the only reason why I say this stuff as informed speculation and a prediction for 2024 is because it must occur because of the complete decoupling of the U.S. dollar. So I believe that we will see a major naval incident in, uh, in the Middle East or the Mediterranean uh, in 2024. I want to ask you to weigh in on something. Do you think that this Chinese capitulation, a part of this administration, will be revealed in a meaningful way in the House impeachment inquiries? 
No, I don't. I don't think it'll ever be revealed in a meaningful way until our our uh, Chinese handlers uh, walk in like Xi Jinping just did in San Francisco until they the streets are lined with Chinese flags. And he already met with all the heads of our tech company, which when you meet with the heads of the tech companies, that means you're meeting with the heads of our uh, internal domestic intelligence apparatus, whether it's the DIA, the NSA, the CIA, pick a three letter, you know, alphabet soup agency. And uh, I do not believe that there will be any meaningful revelations. I mean, all the revelations have already come out and the American populace hasn't batted an eye. Anything from from, uh, you know, our elections to our county board members, to our school boards, to our academia. I didn't understand what you said. What, ja what Jamie was talking about here was Xi Jinping meeting with the heads of big tech. He basically ignored Biden. And he went straight to the head tech guys. And that is the, I agree with Jamie, it's the intelligence apparatus of the United States. And this is why we have the censorship. And if you're anti-China, they're taking you down. I'm anti-China. I suspect that's why I was taken down off YouTube. And Xi Jinping met with these people to talk about laying the groundwork in the information war for the Chinese occupation of America. Um, I think, Jamie, it's not going to be direct Chinese intervention. No, I think it's going to be camouflaged by un kigali principle intervention yeah i agree dave i i agree that that's how it's going to come Jamie? as well too yep i agree that it's going to come through uh through subterfuge and subversion is is the way that's going to manifest which again I, I know i keep abusing the word but that is asymmetric warfare 101 it is absolutely uh there's a lot of people out there that are talking about the white hat military um, and it goes to the sublime and ridiculous where Katie Hobbs, the uh, illegitimate governor of Arizona, has actually been tried and get Mo and executed and replaced with a double. I mean, that's to me, that's insanity talking. Um, but I do think there is an element of the U.S. military that has had enough. And if they're pushed to the brink, they might stand up. And this is why they did Jane Help 16. What do you think, Jamie? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. And and it's it's hard because there is that, you know, there there's always going to be that loyal patriotic component that has high morals and they actually hold true to the ethos uh that they abide by and the oaths that they sworn. The only uh the only thing that I would say is that, you know, coming from that militaristic standpoint, even as a first responder in multiple disciplines, is that as soon as you're cut off from any form of your assets, your tools, we'll say, your tools of your trade, you, you're no, you're no different than any other civilian. You, you're, you're powerless. You're helpless. You don't have the mobility. You don't have the beans, the bullets, the band aids. Uh, you don't have the infrastructure. You don't have the communications. As soon as that gets removed from you, you're, you're kind of hamstrung, or you're definitely nullified as, as an entity. And I think that that's what the central planners are counting on as though there may be uh you know units or or different let's types get, of let's leadership get a final prediction before we close yeah go ahead no i like i said you're really being attacked on your end um uh, they're taken out about every other word let's go for one final prediction before we close hopefully we can get this in yeah uh i the one final prediction that that i would offer is you're going to see the thing things in the middle east change and and transpire in a way that most people never even thought imaginable okay uh hey ladies and gents i'm gonna go ahead and try to keep doing these predictions for 2024 i mean i was having some major internet problems uh while recording with with dave which is par for the course for living in the rocky mountains but I think that this information is prescient enough to be able to continue going on. It's always awkward talking to a camera by myself. Usually I like to do interviews, but we'll kind of work through this because this stuff is pretty significant. And it's it's unfortunate that it's so easily dismissed and also that the the uh, the the macro gets lost in the micro. I know I talk about that all the time. So one of the other major predictions that I have for 2024 is, is the signification of the decoupling of the U.S. dollar. Now, because it looks like a death by a thousand cuts, unfortunately, a lot of people don't really understand the depths and the degree to which what's actually happening. But what I believe is going to occur in 2024 is that the economic 
death gurgles, for lack of a better word. The fact that we are in agonal respirations and, and the U.S. economy has been pulled off life support is, is going to become apparent in 2024 from Wall Street finally down to Main Street. Uh, we have the repudiation of the dollar on every level. We have the repudiation of longstanding partnerships and alliances, both economic and militaristically and within trade. Uh, we have the removal of key diplomats uh, that are and, uh, and lines of diplomacy that are being shut off internationally uh, from all manner of different nations and nation states. And all this is part and partial to the repudiation of the dollar of the, as the world's global reserve currency. And again, the majority of people, especially in the West and in particular the United States of America, are completely detached from what that actually means. They don't understand the nuances when they, maybe they even hear a sound about sound bite if they hear a sound bite of what's happening economically and who's pivoting where and why and taking yuans or gold for the dollar or the re repatriating of gold in this nation or that nation and and the uh, and the uh, you know the nullification of different alliances and strategic partnerships globally but 2024 will be the year where there is no doubt in your mind that this thing is a done deal. And what I expect to hear is the neuro-linguistic manipulation of recession, recession, recession. That's the talking heads that you'll hear on all the mainstream media, uh, all the pundits in the mainstream media. You will hear the word recession. But when they're using that word, just know and understand that they're not talking about a recession. They're talking about a global economic reset through hyperinflationary money policy on a way that we don't understand. And even biblically... From a biblical worldview, we know that that's a certainty of what's going to come. So again, we're going to see this, this degradation of the U.S. homogeny uh, internationally with the de facto repudiation of very long-standing partnerships. A lot of people aren't aware that even uh, countries like that are historically long-term alliances like France and Germany, other European nations, as well as Central and South American nations, are all openly rejecting U.S. dollar, moving into BRICS. They're nullifying their different partnerships because they know what's coming next. Okay, so that's the one thing. The economic sphere is going to be mega. Let me roll into that for another prediction for uh, 2024. It will be the uh, kangs, for lack of a better word, of in the, in the nail-biting nature of what's going on with the global supply chains secondary to maritime shipping. We have corridors such as anywhere from the Suez Canal, from the Strait of Hormuz, to even up to including a huge strait, the Strait of Gibraltar, with Algeria uh, declaring war in that area and saying that they're going to, they have the potential to block the Strait of Gibraltar, which gives access to the Mediterranean Sea and other uh, different inland seas. We have the Bosphorus Straits, which is in being impeded and, and impeded. We have 40% of global supply coming out of the Red Sea that has been automatically stopped because of the threat from Houthi missiles and other, uh, and other terroristic state actors. We have the global maritime insurance companies, which most people can't even fathom how radically significant that world is, saying that they will not insure ships, goods, cargoes, or the ships or the crews any longer from operating that area because of the threat of the attacks. And what this all relates to, again, is this compounding interest, for lack of a better word, of 2024 being the year that everything shifts and changes, that convergent zenith that I always talk about. And, and the way it's going to trickle down is initially the reason why people aren't tuned to it, because they're not in tune until it actually affects their pocketbook. And if, unfortunately, when it finally affects you as a consumer in your pocketbook and your familial dynamics within your household and your family economics, both monthly or by the year or, you know, long term strategic financial planning within your family, you are the late last sign of the collapse and the restructuring of the global economy. And why that's important is because all the groundwork has been sown for the CBDCs, right? The central bank digital currencies blocked by blockchain technology. It's not the currency itself. It's not central bank currencies that's the problem. It's the technology that undergirds the currencies, which is blockchain technology. And actually, blockchain technology is something that permeates 
all different aspects of your human experience being uh, bagged and tagged digitally, for lack of a better word, on a macro sphere through now through AI uh, technological algorithms and their ability through threat fusion centers to compile metadata in a way that most people don't even know and understand. So the geopolitical to the militaristic to the technological to the biotechnological interface to the economics, to the supply chain, it's all relatable and interconnected and synergistic to where they where they are going to take us from 2024 onward. And that's why all this is radically significant. Let me shift gears for another prediction. What's going on with Israel and Hamas, which isn't Hamas, right? It's Israel and Hamas, Palestine, but it's also Hezbollah, which is Lebanon, but it's Houthis, which is Yemen, Oman, which is actually proxies of sects of Shia Islam, which is Iran, which is actually a proxy of Russia and China, which is also working in Central Africa with the Wagner Group out of Russia and Chinese troops in Africa. And they're, the Chinese are colonizing all different manner of things in Africa, which is related to China uh, implementing the fact that they will not export or they'll put export controls on rare earth uh, a rare earth minerals to the United States of America, which is also relatable to China getting ready to uh, invade Taiwan, which I believe that that is a prediction for 2024 is that China will move on Taiwan. While the rare earth minerals from Africa and the Middle East is part and parcel to our technological infrastructure and our chip making. Taiwan is repre it represents 90% of the global uh, chip processing manufacturing on the face of the earth. All of this is interconnected. And that's the thing that I think most people don't understand is like you, you cannot look at it in a vacuum. It's all interconnected. So the Israel Hamas uh, and, and just we'll just call it the Israel Arab issue that's going on right now is going to escalate to a point of full of full regional integration all consolidating on Israel. I actually believe that there will be a major uh, overstep by the Israeli government, but whether it's whether it's necessitated or not doesn't matter. But that they will be forced to conduct a military operation in a way. This is my prediction for 2024 that will flag them beyond comprehension on the global sphere, and you will see a firestorm of anti-Semitism sweep across the whole earth to where people will either turn a blind eye or actively undergird an entire alliance of Arab nations consolidating and converging on Israel. I believe, it's my prediction, 2024, that Jerusalem and Israel will be on the tongues of most people over the face of the earth. And out from that, what I believe will occur in 2024 is that you will have a global collective governmental partnership, whatever that looks like, whether it's through the United Nations or some other sort of uh, collectivized ruling body that will come in to Israel under the guise of mega humanitarian crisis, and they will begin implementing some degree of governmental controls, economic controls, and regional controls out from Jerusalem to the surrounding area under the guise of humanitarian necessities. That's a very firm prediction that I have for 2024 and eager expectation of that. Uh, I also believe in 2024, we will see a restructuring of the Middle East that we haven't seen since World War I with the breakup of the Ottoman Empire. I believe that there will be a redrawing of certain maps and borders, long-held borders that we, as a society, we, we have these uh, concepts of, of different nations and nation states and even theocracies and things like that, that we will see that be undermined and usurped. And there will actually be a redrawing of the map in particular regions of the world, including uh, Southeast Asia and the Middle East prediction for 2024. Whether or not it happens, I don't know. That's why it's a prediction, right? Uh, let me see. What else do we have? Uh, global uh, decoupling of the world. Uh, oh, yeah. Let's switch over. Let's switch gears over to Russia and China. I mean, Russia and China to Russia and Ukraine. Um, it's my belief or my informed speculation that what I expect to see is that there will be some form of armistice slash peace deal slash cessation of uh, kinetic actions in Ukraine and that eastern Ukraine will be ceded to Russia 
and I believe that Western Ukraine will be ceded to Poland or some other European nation state, and we will see the breakup in, of Ukraine as we know and understand it. Um, I expect to see that in 2024. Unless the U.S. gets really stupid and is unwilling to do that, then again, that increases the likelihood for a nuclear exchange. I personally do not see nuclear exchange as a viable uh, political or militaristic option this soon, 2024. Perhaps in the future, but I don't see that as something that's viable that we could expect to see in 2024. The conditions aren't quite right for that yet. Uh, I believe it's going to be way more along the lines of asymmetric warfare, hybrid warfare, cyber warfare, economic warfare, lawfare, all these other uh, aspects of usurpation of governing authority across the face of the earth. I already kind of talked about with Dave when we were still on the air about the U.S. and NATO being exposed as being a paper tiger. I think that's a done deal. Anything from Afghanistan to Ukraine to the South China Sea and Taiwan, which I believe I believe unequivocally China will move on Taiwan this year, uh, to North Korea's movement on South Korea and Japan, I believe prediction 2024, North Korea will do some form of of high aggression kinetically against South Korea and also Japan in 2024. Why? Because the U.S. as the global hammer of all the earth is null and void. That's why all these people are making their moves. I expect to see China move on both India and Pakistan. I expect to see Pakistan and India move against one another uh, over uh, the Kashmir. These are all predictions for 2024. I expect to see a major war flare up out of nowhere in the Balkans in a way that you least expected, whether it's Slovenia or Moldova or, you know, uh, Czech or Czech Republic or, or just these other Slavic nations that have long-standing tensions because of their ethnic divide. I believe that you're going to see more militaristic movements in Central America and South America and also in Africa, in particular North Africa and the Horn of Africa. Why? Because the U.S. and NATO has been proven to be null and void. We are a defunct state. We are a completely, utterly defunct state. So I think that there's going to be movements in our media tickers every day that we're going to see, and, and that nobody's going to compartmentalize them correctly. They're just going to see it, and it's going to be in, in one ear and out the other ear, and they're not going to be connecting to the bigger scheme of what actually is playing out in real time. So that's why I think it's critical critical to even offer these kinds of, uh, you know, what are they, analysis, for lack of a better word, so that when it does happen, and there's just a little blip on the media sphere, especially in the West, we do not get media like the rest of the world gets it. When it's a little blip, hopefully we can recall to mind like, oh yes, this is part of a bigger picture of movements that are occurring in real time. Uh, let's see, I talked about North Korea. I, I truly believe North Korea, we will see them posture in a way that they haven't ever done before. Uh, I mentioned with Dave, hopefully it got picked up. I can't remember where it broken off, but I'll just, where, where the uh, audio and the video started breaking up, but I'll just re uh, I'll re-mention it. I don't even know if that's a word, but I'll mention it again that, uh, I do believe that they will be a, uh, a surface, uh, uh, warfare missile an anti-ship missile that will be fired against a U.S. aircraft carrier to the point of sinking a significant U.S. military mega asset and force multiplier. So I do anticipate that absolutely happening this year because we are intentionally provoking that to happen to acquire the right optics that we need at home domestically and internationally to justify what we want to do next with the Middle East, Iran in particular, Saudi Arabia and other, uh, you know, other Middle Eastern oil producing, energy producing states in general, we must have it. It's, it's a done deal because of the death gurgles of the petrol dollar and the U.S. homogeny in that way. Let's see. Uh, Another prediction for 2024 will be the revelation of the obsolescence of our conventional warfare superiority. We're already beginning to see that even with low-tech devices. 
uh, uh, and hybrid warfare via, via drones, drone technology, low-tech drone technology, low-tech missile systems, low-tech force multiplication of cyber warfare that our superior dominance, I mean, our technological dominance militaristically, which then translates to geopolitically, which then translates to economically, I believe that with that there will be mega revelations of just how vulnerable we are and how obsolete the conventional warfare doctrines that we've been operating off of are. That'll be null and void. We've already seen that even with the uh, the inadequacies of our missile systems and our ter terrestrial-based nuclear armaments in the U.S. We saw that with the Chinese spy balloon being allowed to come across the U.S. and collect data. Uh, we've seen that with the very particular hackings of critical infrastructure and our tech company infrastructure, even our GAO, right, our government accounting office being hacked and the names of millions of government workers being pulled out from the Chinese. So I think that that will be mega revelation in 2024 is just how bad it actually is. Uh, let's see. Fracturing of our national identity, the national divorce prior to the election. I see that. I guess uh I guess I'll kind of close with this. I have uh, smokescreen diversions by UAP, UFO, and recovery of biologics. Kind of a side note. I believe that that's a side note smokescreen just to engender more fear, right? And fear is the currency of their economy. With fear, you get pretty much everything that you want to accomplish with fear. So I be believe a lot of the... UAP, UFO, you know, uh, crash recovery and retrievals and congressional hearings are secondary smoke screens meant to divide and conquer, create distrust in government, sow fear, and again, create factions. That's what the outcome of that is. So I'll leave you with this, that I believe that there will be a hyper increased yet still soft disclosure of threats from extraterrestrial and when i say extraterrestrial i mean off earth threats i don't mean extraterrestrial as in aliens or little green men or grays or nordics or any of the other things that that people dig deep into what i say is that i believe that there will be a hyper increase soft disclosure through mainstream media channels of the potential or the possibility or even the imminency of a threat from space bodies, whether it's asteroid or meteoroid or a comet that has the ability to impact life as we know it on the planet. I did not say an, an Earth ending event. I didn't say an extinction level event. I just said Earth impacting event, that it will shift and change the psyche, the global consciousness, the supply chains, the economies, the governments, the militaries of the world, central planners, central policies, that uh, the threat from outer space is going to be one of the top tier stories that's slowly released over and over and over again throughout 2024 and right into the beginning of 2025. So that, for lack of a better word, is a brief synopsis of the predictions for 2024. The big thing being domestically with cybersecurity and the restructuring of the global order. Uh, secondarily, the threats from outside and the militaristic maneuverings and economic maneuverings. And thirdly, and in particularly, will be uh, a major shared traumatic experience through the potentiality of uh, the effects of extraterrestrial threats. Uh, even spoken to by Ronald Reagan, right, in his 1987 address to the United Nations. So anyways, those are my predictions for 2024. Take them, leave it, love it, don't really care. They're just speculations. They could all be totally wrong or they could all pan out exactly like that and then some to a worse degree. But uh, given what the global elite are saying, what the academics are saying, what the scientific community is saying, and even what eschatology is pointing to, there seems to be a very unique convergent zenith coming into our purview in 2024. So with that, we say stay frosty, prepare accordingly, primarily spiritually, secondarily, emotionally, and thirdly, physically, so that you can be an asset in a time of need to your neighbors and your family members and the loved ones around you, rather than becoming a liability. So thank you all for uh, joining Dave and I on this, uh, this uh, mental gymnastics thought exercise on our predictions for 2024. Thank you.